Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the fourth episode of Tea on Twitch. Obviously, I just forgot to unmute my microphone because I was trying to get a whole bunch of stuff going while the, the show was steeping. Um, my name is Matt Demers, I'm your host. Today is going to be a little bit different than it usually is, mostly just because um, I did not get as much chance to prepare as I usually do. Usually I come into this episode or these shows with a whole bunch of preparation and I've got a topic today and I'm going to, you know, examine this tea and that kind of junk. But this week I had a suggestion from someone that I should um, focus this on newbie questions and people who just want to get into tea. So uh, I thought this was a really good idea, mostly just because I think a lot of people want to get into tea, but they have questions that they like want answered and don't really know where to start. And they see a grand array of just like tea wear and accessories and loose leaf and they just have no idea. They're just overwhelmed. And for a lot of people, that's the same thing. It's like saying you want to get into wine. Wine is a very specialized industry. Wine is something that when you want to take it a little bit more seriously, it's like you're kind of moving beyond your more bang for your buck labels and actually trying to get into something that tastes good and is developed and has like, you're, you're trying to develop your palate as well. You're trying to develop the way that you taste tea or sorry, or wine. Because the theory is, is that you're trying not to waste your money, right? You're trying not to buy bottles of wine that you're just going to drink and just be like, I, I have no idea whether this is good or not. You kind of have to do research. You kind of have to like learn what your tastes are. You have to learn how your brain perceives the tastes that are going to your tongue. But like I said, that's all kind of like out the window this time. We are going to be just looking at the very basics of what tea kind of is to me. Um, we are going to be opening another browser in order to do some browsing. And normally I do this on uh, Chrome. But it's kind of a bad idea, mostly just because we um, don't want to... Oh, wow. I still have this open from the last time we, we looked at this. Um, okay, so we are going to be... We're going to call this Opera. We're going to be looking at some stuff mostly just because we... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The... Uh, mostly just because I think people really want to like learn a little bit more. I've been tr pretty I've been pretty uh, educational so far in terms of just like what I've been bringing to the table um, with specific teas, but just like general stuff. Like let's just go really right back right back to the basics. And the first thing that we looking we're gonna look at is this. This is regular old bear, like bottom of the barrel grocery store tea. And this is what I call like I just call this grocery store tea. This is Moroccan style mint which I think they threw the style in there just in case that anyone was going to sue them and say this isn't from Morocco. Um, it's President's Choice, which is a Canadian brand. It's kind of just like a very generic brand that President's Choice stores carry. Um, I really like this specific brand of tea, and I have another kind of box of chamomile stuff also from President's Choice. I don't know. I, I like their teas mostly just because they're simple and they do the job. But And this is, for most people, this is going to be their... Um, entrance into this is going to be their entrance into what tea is for me when I got into tea I got into tea because of Arizona green tea and that is a very um, not tea like experience so we're going to transition over this to my browser and we are going to look at uh, we're going to open this is from the last time we looked at this we were looking at Junchiabari which is a tea garden um, we're going to go to Google image search, and we're going to look up Arizona green tea. Um, so this was what I started off with. Um, I started off with Arizona's green tea, which is like 99 cents. It's just barely tasting like j green tea with ginseng and honey. Essentially, it is more of a pop or like a soda drink than anything. I even got one of these once, which is just like a bulk. Like you want like one gallon of, of tea. There you go. Um, where this kind of fell short was that it is a, um, it's not really tea. It's like flavored to be like tea. It's more of like if you're drinking Nest tea or something like that, you're not necessarily, um, <clears throat> you're not necessarily getting the full experience. You're you're kind of fooling. I wouldn't say you're fooling yourself because that kind of like puts a little bit of a, a weird thing on the person buying it. It's not your fault. If it tastes good, whatever, drink it. That's not not my problem. It's more of just like eventually you kind of have to transition somewhere else. And if I can find it, I have where, where I moved on from there is I opened my parents' cupboard 
and I found... I don't know where it is at the moment. I do have some just like plain Lipton or Tetley green tea and I'll show you what the container looks like. Um, it looks like this. It is just like a container. If you open it, it has circular tea bags inside. And this is like just very, like I said, bottom of the barrel kind of stuff. This is stuff that you um, just find in your kitchen normally or your parents' kitchen or your grandparents' kitchen. And uh, you can just boil it. You can boil some water and put the tea in and then drink it. What I used to do is I used to um, keep it steeped way too long. I used to keep it steeped to the point where it was getting very bitter. I used to keep it steeped to the point where it was losing all its taste and then I'd water it down or like I'd sweeten it up with honey and it kind of like lost all the flavor. So where I went from there, I, bu I bought my first teapot. I went to a Walmart and bought a brown porcelain teapot just so I could throw a couple bags of that stuff in there and make a large quantity of tea. So this is where things kind of like started. And then I, I was thinking, okay, what, where do I go from here? Where do I um, explore from here? And the answer for me was to go to David's Tea. And David's Tea is um, a Canadian-based company, and they have brick-and-mortar stores in the States where essentially, let's look up let's look up another image of them. Essentially, th their store is very um, based on discovery. You can discover different types of loose-leaf teas there. And um, David's Tea Store. I'm going to open, let's see, do they have any larger images? of what their interiors look like. Let's look at that Google image search and see. This is what I love I love about Google image searches is that you can do like the size T like the large sizes and stuff like that and that really helps. So we're going to bring back the um, opera for a second. Uh, we are going to view image and then transition. Okay. So this is what is inside of David's T. All these different containers are um, labeled and they are color coded in terms of what type of tea is in there. The black labels are obviously black tea, blue teas are, or blue labels are oolong, green teas are in the green labels. Um, the brown, I believe, were the puers. The um, the reds are the rooibos. I forget what the purple the purples are. Um, I want I think they're mates. Yeah, they're mates. And then the yellows are herbals. And they uh, they also have like a very, very light blue, which is uh, white teas, which aren't really shown here. But it kind of gives you an idea of what your expectations are when you're going into them. And for me, going in and smelling and actually being able to like take these containers down and smell them gave me an uh, idea to just like, okay, I can understand what what I'm kind of getting into because that's the that's kind of the hard part is you don't want to invest into something that you don't really have a idea for. You don't want to waste your money. You don't want to buy something that is always just going to sit on that um, shelf and do nothing. So I totally understand how that's really intimidating to get in for new people. Essentially what you want to do is you want to go into a store like this. You want to go into like a tea store, a tea emporium, or even just like your local like cafe. And you want to see if they have loose leaf tea. And then you just want to buy a cup that's hot. You know, you want to, you want to just like ask them like what it kind of tastes like or what, you know, you can kind of expect from it. And you just want to buy a cup because it's only going to cost you maybe two or $3. Um, luckily, like if it's kind of like a local cafe, it probably won't cost you that much because they want your business, obviously. And it's not exactly like a high end place. So where you kind of go from there is you want to sit down and you want actually just like want to un you want to keep an eye on like how you are tasting the tea and not so much you I don't really encourage you to go full like flavor profile on this yet where you're like oh okay what taste buds am I using what blah 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 am I using don't worry about that just sit there relax enjoy your tea just enjoy it just it, even if you don't like the taste it is more about just like having that moment to yourself and attaching a positive experience to it because that's that's why I enjoy tea so much is it's less of the taste and it's less of the drinking it's more of the experience that I get with it where I'm calming myself where I'm taking a moment to just hang out and chill and do nothing so once you've kind of like done that a couple times you can usually find a tea that really speaks to you or really kind of clicks with you and if you're at a place like David's or Tivana, or I'm not sure about Europe, sadly, I don't really have that many. Um, I don't really have that many ideas of tea shops in Europe that are kind of beginner friendly. So if you guys have anything that I could look at or 
um, order something from to see what they're like, please send me a link. That'd be amazing. Once you kind of like found that one tea that you like, you kind of have to under, you kind of have to figure out like what your investment is on it because you can buy teaware that has, or you can buy stuff that is relatively permanent, or you can buy stuff that's impermanent. And what I mean by that is, um, my uh, I I don't have the mug that it comes with here, but I bought a mug that is essentially is a three part. It's a three part mug where it actually has the mug and then it has this that sits inside it, which is this is a tea sieve. And essentially you put the tea in here and then you can easily with this tab, you can pull it out once it's done steeping and you can drain it or whatever, or save it for more steepings or whatever. And it allows you to kind of like have this permanent thing that you don't have to reinvest into and you can reuse and reuse and reuse, which is good because, um, for me buying this mug was like 20 bucks i think and then what also came with the mug is this which is a lid so that if you wanted to put a lid on your tea or it also turns into a coaster so that if you're this is dripping you can put this on here and uh it can drip into there which is great or no sorry you flip it upside down and it has like a lip and stuff like that so that's like if you really kind of like want to make the worst thing worst things to worse even if you never drink tea again you at least have a good mug right like there's you, pretty much your the only thing that you're never going to use again is this thing however you you always you could always use a mug right however if you want to go a little bit more impermanent and you find yourself um doing things like taking your tea on the go or using it in a travel mug or something like that you can always buy these which david's have them and i assure i'm sure that amazon and you know any generic place that sells anything related to tea has is these and my box is destroyed apologies but what this is is a tea filter and for me this is like eight bucks for a box of a hundred so you can make a hundred cups of tea or just like make a hundred tea bags out of this and what they are is they are biodegradable friendly and they are just like a pouch and it looks like a tea bag and it opens um, to allow you to put tea inside of it and then from there you just pull the drawstring closed so that um, the tea can't escape into your water and you throw in the um, you throw it into the, the cup you know steep your tea that kind of stuff and from there you're kind of just like um, you're, you're kind of off to the races. Let's put it that way. You've kind of deci discovered, like, you've kind of decided, like, what your tea wants to be or what your commitment level wants to be with very little investment. Because, like I said, you either have, you're spending eight bucks for something you're probably never going to use, like, that might sit there, or you're paying, like, 20 bucks and you at least get a mug out of it. So that's kind of, like, where the big, that's where it starts. You know, you, you usually bought one tea that you want to, like, have over and over again and you you buy an accessory that like allows you to do that sadly it's like you can make tea with a hundred percent stuff that you have in your um kitchen you don't have to buy anything in order to get into it but it becomes complicated because essentially what you're doing is taking the tea and just dumping it into your your um cup and letting it float around there and you're getting pieces everywhere and that kind of stuff. You're not drinking it once it's done steeping. Essentially what you have to do afterwards is you have to take one of those fine grain sieves. And I'll bring the, the window back up for this one just to give you an idea of it. Is um, sieve kitchen. Um, fine strainer kitchen. Um, what you're looking at is something like this which you use for like pasta or you use in your kitchen in order to boil, uh, to like cool eggs or anything like that. And what you're doing is you have to pour what's in your cup into another cup so that all the tea leaves and all the like little bits and everything get caught in this sieve. And if you are really desperate and you do not want to spend money besides like spending money on the tea that you've bought, you can do that because um, it, it achieves the same effect. It's just like a lot more um work it's a lot more intensive you have to like do a lot more and clean a lot more which for me the, usually the reason why i buy into stuff is to avoid doing cleanup and to avoid doing that kind of stuff that's really annoying because i don't like pouring liquid from one liquid one liquid to another it just kind of scares me a little bit because boiling water we have a, a question from a chat 
Is tea healthy? And if so, please explain its benefits. Tea is like, it depends on the tea that you were drinking. It sounds a little weird, but it's just like each tea is made in a specific way that achieves a certain taste. And taste is like the first, the first duty of the tea. It is not the taste is like what people want to achieve first rather than the health benefits. The health benefits are almost secondary with some teas like green teas a lot of people like the the science is very weird it's like you'll always find a place that'll tell you something is healthy for you and i haven't to be honest i haven't really done a lot of research in terms of like what specific teas are different or are fine it's more of just like if you look at the benefits with it as opposed to some of the other stuff that you're drinking tea is obviously a healthier choice it is kind of like water you are there's no carbs there's no sugar there well depending on what's in the tea like I have a tea that has little bits of candy in it because it's like festive. And obviously if you expose that to hot water, you're going to get a little bit of sugar in that hot water. However, if you're just getting something that's like a straight tea, there's nothing in there but tea, you're not going to get that sugar. However, depending on how it's grown and how it's processed and all that other kind of stuff, you're getting varying levels of caffeine and you're getting varying levels of other different chemicals based on what's being released by the tea and it's steeping. So something like green tea or something like uh, chamomile or just like um, ginger or something like that, it depends on like what's in it. If it's a ginger tea, you know, it's or a peppermint, you know, mint teas are very great for settling your stomach or like green teas are very good for just like... Um, they have a lot of antioxidants and that kind of stuff. Like when people ask me about the health benefits of tea, I kind of just like glaze over a little bit, mostly just because I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. It is very much a like cosmopolitan magazine kind of thing where they're usually if a tea is promising you some kind of crazy health benefit, it's usually too good to be true. Or it's like, hey, I only drank tea, this tea for like a year. And then I got like a couple points down on my cholesterol. And then there's that correlation there. People try to explain that, you know? So... To be honest, I wouldn't drink tea just to start, just for that kind of health benefit. Like that's almost like the the, the reason. I don't know. You could do it, but I'm that's not me. I don't do that kind of, for that kind of reason. It's mostly just that um, you're normally going to see a benefit if you are drinking tea instead of other things. If you are drinking tea instead of soda, obviously you're going to see health benefits. If you are drinking tea instead of coffee with a ton of sugar in it, you're going to see health benefits. If you're drinking tea even with honey that you don't put into it, you're going to see health benefits. If you're drinking tea instead of sugary fruit juice all the time, yes, awesome. It's normally for people, like what I suggested to people is people who hate just drinking water. There's a lot of people who just like hate drinking water, um, just water because it's kind of boring. But it's like you can make tea and you can make iced tea and it's pretty much just flavored water without any kind of like adverse effects to it. Um, it's just a simple way of like getting that water intake up without having to slave yourself. Exactly. It's better. Basically, it's better than carbonated sugar water. Yes, yes. Carbonated sugar water with syrup in it. Um, so, yeah. Where were we? We were kind of going into the deep end, I guess. Where... What's your preferred me method? I believe your kettle is an infuser. Yes, my kettle is an infuser mostly just because um, I'm lazy. And normally what happens with tea is that I um, get impatient in terms of the steeping time and in terms of the temperature. So I bought a kettle that just does that for me. So I'll be one second. Um, I'm just going to bring it over here. Ugh, this thing's heavy. So essentially my kettle is an infuser in the sense that it has this little basket in here that you put tea in and then it lowers itself and raises itself again. Um, but to be honest, what I started out with in terms of kettleware and what I still have, excuse me, I'm wearing pajamas, um, is this. This is literally a $10 kettle I got at a grocery store. And as long as it boils water, you're fine. Mostly just because when I started out before I got that kettle with the temperature control, I did not care about, um, I did not care about steeping temperature. Each tea that you buy, each like loose leaf tea that you buy is going to have a, the amount of tea you're supposed to use per water, which I rarely, I rarely deal with. I just put, okay, I just put a table or a teaspoon of it inside a bag or the steeper or whatever, and then that's it. Um, but it's also going to have, I don't know if you guys can read this. No, probably not. It says steep four to seven minutes in 96 degree water. So in Canada, water, um, or in the metric system, water boils at 100 degrees. So 
that's 9600 it's not going to make a huge deal you know so i just boil it at 100 and then you just put the bag in and you time it for me i go to a site i believe it's called steep.it um and i'll show you guys what it looks like actually if i go back to opera um if you go to steep.it and then you put something under or at the end of it um it's in a specific format. Like if I put steep.it slash three minutes written out, it'll start a timer for me. Oh, sorry. Um, I need flash player for it. One second. I'm just going to do it on Chrome. Um, if I do steep.it and then three minutes, it starts a timer based on your, um, what you put in. So if you put three minutes, if you put 59 minutes, whatever, if you put, I think if you put one hour, like one and then H U uh, H O U R, I'll start one for an hour but essentially this will go like if I go to even 10 seconds um, it'll start something for 10 seconds and then after it's done it'll pop up with a um, it'll, it'll start a pop-up and obviously the colors change and that kind of stuff but it'll start a pop-up you can't see it because I guess the, the layered windows or whatever where it'll say T is done and it'll bring focus to the um, it'll bring focus to the window and then from there you can just uh it's a really easy way of timing it instead of having to use a stopwatch or an app or something like that but that, that stuff all really works too so when that's probably the most intimidating thing for people to get into is that the you know the steeping and the element or the temperature element because they think that if they do it wrong they're wasting it you like their tea and that's true i guess if you're have something that's really expensive like that's partially another reason why i got that is if i was going to drink more expensive teas i wanted to prepare it carefully and take the human element out of it the human element of error and um but for stuff like this it really doesn't matter mostly just because the cost per tea in this or you know a very cheaper green tea or something like that it's like seven bucks for 50 grams or something like that or you know that this tea is like I think less than five bucks for 24 bags. So you really don't have to like care that much. It's mostly just about taste. So if you keep a bag in it longer in water longer, it is going to taste more bitter. And that is just like a good rule of thumb to keep remembering. It's like, if you, if you sip your tea and think, oh man, that tastes terrible. It tastes really strong. You can just, there's nothing stopping you from steeping it less and seeing if that's something you like as well. Um, what else? Yeah, so what I really recommend people starting with is I like people I like recommending people start with something that's really low maintenance. And why I mean low maintenance, it's like it doesn't require anything special in terms of steeping temperature because that's usually the hardest thing to get unless you have something specialized where you can set the boil temperature or whatever. Um, what I used for a little while is I used a pot like on my stove with a meat thermometer that and stick in the water every once in a while. But to be honest, that, ta that takes forever. And then having to maintain the temperature, hopefully, while you're steeping it, it's just like you don't really want to worry about it. Um, what you want to get is something that's just like as close to 100 degrees as possible Celsius because, like, that's boiling. And I'd imagine in America they have labels that make it more clear for Fahrenheit because that's what your kettle usually um, stops at. Your kettle stops at boiling. So just get something that is really close to boiling. And then you just want to get something that, like, is doesn't require any kind of maintenance and doesn't re require any kind of special occasion. Like for, for me, this is like something I would recommend to people. It's sadly retired by David's now, but it's just called organic lemon myrtle. And this is a nothing fancy. It's literally, it looks like a, just a bunch of flakes and stuff like that, but it's a very lemony tea. It's just, it's the whole flavor profile is it's just lemon. That's all it is, is just lemon. And that's great because it's a very simplistic experience and I can work it into a number of different things. I don't have to worry about, oh, is it caffeinated or not? Uh, or not? Is it something expensive? Is it something ceremonial? Is it something that requires like a special occasion? I don't feel bad about making a bad cup of tea of that because it's cheap and it's simple and it doesn't like represent anything special. It's the same thing with just like getting something like this. This is why I get cheap supermarket teas is because I can, I can, replicate the experience and the taste of it without messing up there is no chance i'm going to mess that up even if i'm just boiling a kettle and pouring you know water into a cup i don't do not have to worry about that whatsoever 
So you have to, you can kind of do the same thing. If you go to your supermarket and get just a generic Lipton or Tetley green tea, or if you go into David's and get something like North African mint, which is a Moroccan mint, only they've renamed it. Or if you just get like, just ask them, what's the simplest green tea that they have? Um, normally that's a good place to start. And if you're looking for something else, if you like black teas, you can get orange Pico, which is again, is a very common worldly tea, but you can get it in loose leaf and observe the differences between a supermarket brand and loose leaf. Or you can get something like uh, English breakfast or, so or something like that. You don't have to get like a straight tea. You can start with a blend. The great thing about tea, like I said, I, I, I kind of struggle with recommending people first time teas, mostly just because it has to do with your taste. And there's no bad place to start. You can start wherever you want, which is just like the best part of this. It's very low investment if you're just like starting with very kind of middle of the road teas or just, you know, basic level teas. And you don't have to feel bad about investing a lot of money into something like this. This is um, probably one of the more expensive teas I have. It's called Lapsang Shushong. And it basically smells and tastes like burnt wood in the sense that it's very like, it's got a very good aroma. It, I call it my Nick Offerman tea because it basically reminds me of cigars in a library in a leather chair and you're wearing like a velvet robe and stuff like that. It's very statesmanly like. Um, but that's more like complicated. I don't drink that every day. I don't even drink that every week. You know, it, it's for a very specific experience. I don't handle caffeine very well, so I don't drink it, you know, when I can help it. And it's just like there's pretense there. There's like a reason I drink that tea. But for something like a quick green or something like that, I don't care because it just like it's there. I don't care if I run out of it. I don't care if I have to buy more. It's just there. And I think that's the, the best jumping on point for people who want to take tea a little bit more seriously is it's less about challenging yourself in terms of flavor profiles and like challenging yourself with a tea that's hard to um, prepare and more just about integrating tea into your daily life or just as a habit or an experience that you want to experience over and over. Because if you're just viewing it as something that you like do once a month, of course, that's fine. But for me, I don't. Tea is something that I experience every week or every day even. And that's just why I like it. You're allowed to like it at a less level than I do. And you're allowed to like it at a more level than I do. I'm not stopping you. This is very like we're delving into very Bob Ross territory right now in terms of there's no real wrong way to experience tea. Unless you're just making it bad on purpose and then shit talking it. Let's put it that way. And then you're just being an idiot. Um, so for me, like, I think a lot of people are kind of intimidated right now in terms of all the merchandise that's coming out around tea, like Tivana and other kind of brands are really hammering at home that they have their brand of tea wear, but it's like, as long as it holds water, like as long as it holds water and as long as it's not proprietary and by proprietary, like proprietary means that you need to buy something else in their system in order to use another thing. Like think about GoPros, GoPros are a camera, but you can't use, you can't attach it to any tripod. It doesn't come with a tripod mount built into it. You have to buy something in order to attach it to a standard tripod. And that mount or the camera itself is proprietary, which means that you have to use their system in order to use it in a certain way. It's like Apple. Um, you, they would rather you use Apple branded cables, which cost more. But people have backwards engineered third party cables that cost less, you know. Um, the Apple, if you think about the Apple MagSafe, um, thing, which is like their charger. You know how the laptops have the charger where the, it's like magnetized to the laptop so that if you pull it out by accident, it doesn't like yank the whole laptop with it. That's a proprietary thing. Those plugs would be everywhere if Apple did not have the trademark and patent on it. Be, but since they do, no one else can make them. So tea isn't proprietary. Tea is as long as you have a vessel to steep it in like this. And as long as you have, or, you know, or like this. You can make tea in anything that holds liquid, which is amazing. It's freeing. It allows you to buy teaware with character like this. This is something that was made for me. I got this, This a friend of mine, or a, sorry, a family member made this mug for me. And it's like, I'm allowed to drink tea out of it. You know, I don't have to buy the Tivana branded teapot or the Tivana, uh, Tivana branded mug in order to actually enjoy tea, you know? And that's very freeing. It means you can, exp like, you don't have to buy into a huge system besides just tea. Moving into teapots. Teapots are an interesting territory, mostly because I love them. I'm starting to get a little bit of addicted to them. Um, teapots are just obviously a place where you guys can um, buy more, like, brew more tea at once and have it stay warmer longer. 
don't know if you guys can hear those birds outside, but they're really annoying. I have two teapots on hand right now. Technically, my kettle is a teapot, but I have this. This is a cast iron teapot I got for Christmas. It's very heavy. Um, what's good about cast iron is it um, retains heat longer because um, it's iron instead of any other materials like plastic or something like that or glass. Glass is very good for glass like expends heat very well, but it's cooler because you have like um, you get to see what's in it. So it depends. It's like if you're if you want to make like a liter of tea to drink over like a couple hours, you want something that's going to retain heat. But it's like if you don't care if you're just making a tea for a couple cups or whatever, you, you know, whatever. You can buy whatever you want. Um, I also have a, a sterling steel um, teapot that is made for very large. Like I can make a liter and a half of tea. Um, this was discontinued by David's. And I have a really good habit of picking things that I like from David's right before they're being discontinued. And this is, this is it. It's very big. Um, so most teapots that you buy these days will come with something inside of it that will help you steep the tea but if worse comes to worse like i said tea isn't proprietary you can just put like a bunch of tea in one of these or two of these and then just throw it in a teapot and it works um sometimes i will just throw two bags of this inside of a teapot and i will brew a whole bunch of that and it doesn't matter you don't have to buy anything fancy this is why you can go to like thrift stores and stuff and buy teapots there and especially teapots with a lot of character so like this comes with this which is since it's by the same company, it looks very similar to this. It's just like this fits in the teapot better. And it allows you to fill it up with water and not overflow into the basket. So what that does is that you just put some tea in there and then you just pull it out. And then you have a pot full of tea. Um, which obviously the tea comes out of this part of the spout. And you know, you just drink it like normal. To be honest, like I got my first teapot I think from Canadian Tire. Which is like a very Canadian branded... Um, hardware store like any place that sells kitchenware just sells basic teapots and you like i said you don't have to worry about the pretense of it being a good one or amazing as long as it as long as it's a vessel that holds tea you can drink from it you know as long as it's healthy you know <laughs> let's put it that way don't drink out of like anything that's like rusted or you know terrible but you know um yeah so i think i covered tea wear i cover tea pots i cover buying your first tea but i think i can kind of just like go r.i.p kettle cam yeah the kettle cam is not in commission right now mostly because the second webcam that i use it's usually a lot of maintenance in order to try to extend the usb cable over there um to where all my tea is and since i wasn't brewing a specific cup of tea this week i figured you know we'll just keep the kettle cam off for now um so i guess like the easiest way to progress from here is to just talk about the different types of teas and what kind of flavor profiles you can expect from them. Like I said, I'm not the biggest, I need to do a lot more research into this, this method or into this, um, into this level of questioning, I guess, into like where I, um, into this area, mostly just because I'm not a, um, tea sommelier yet. I am going to open up a image. I'm going to open up an image that actually like ex like explains a lot of what I am trying to explain. One second. I just want to find something that does what I want it to here. Basically, I'm looking for something that's like a spectrum. I'm looking for something that's like a spectrum of what teas look like before they're brewed and after they're brewed and like what. Um, yeah, I'm looking just for a visual aid. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> it's really annoying. Okay. Okay, this is pretty much the best I got right here. We're going to transition this over. So this is just like a really simple tea spectrum. At, at one end, you pretty much have white tea. And at the other end, you have black tea. Um, that is kind of like the common spectrum. And I use air quotes for that on what the ends of the spectrum are. Normally, you're going to find white and green tea really close to each other. And then you're going to find like oolongs. and Or it usually goes like, you know, white, green, um herbals well actually herbals aren't even on the scale 
rooibos, which is like an African green or an African tea. And then you kind of get into oolong and pu'ers and black tea. And I know that's a lot to kind of to register at once, but there's a reason you kind of like think about them. Black teas, like uh, if you've ever listened to any of the other episodes, I really harp a lot on um, something called oxidation. And oxidation is something within the process of making tea that determines like whether it's a white tea or a black tea or anywhere in between, because all this tea comes from the same plant. It all comes from the Camellia sinensis, which is a tea plant. And what makes the difference in terms of how it comes out or the different taste profiles is where it's grown, the temperature at which it's grown, like the the environment, um, how high off the ground it's grown, and just like the soil quality and that kind of stuff. So tea in India is grown differently from tea in China, which is grown differently from tea in Japan. So don't really stress too much about like which one is better because it's all about taste. It is not all about which one is better. There's no hierarchy of teas to be honest it's all about just like what you find tastes good so for black teas we're gonna i guess we'll just start on one one of the one end of the spectrum and just kind of like go over and like i said if you guys have any questions in chat please let me know because um i'm pretty open to answering them and that's kind of the whole point of this episode black teas are what you think of when you think of things like darjeeling and um very like popular brands like English Breakfast and um, Orange Pico. They're dark. They are very bitter. They have just kind of like this very heady um, taste, which means that they're kind of full. They, they don't feel very, I don't want to say they don't feel very natural, but they feel just very dark. They, they, they feel like they taste, you know, they're very kind of um, bold and solid and just kind of... Um, it's like you're drinking something that is just like filling you up like completely not so much from like a uh, not something from like an, a physical perspective but more of just like a mental or emotional one it's like it, it just kind of like overwhelms you a little bit and a lot of people like them for meals and for caffeine and that kind of junk and that's usually what they are used for they are very caffeinated they are very kind of um, working people tea and you, as you kind of like go right or like go down the spectrum Things kind of get a little bit more fancier, like people regard it as more fancier, high class, mostly just because the process becomes harder in order to ascertain like a good leaf. And so those teas are associated with people who can afford them, which means that um, they were generally regarded as more high class. Black teas, like I said, are um, kind of working class in the sense that they don't take a lot of maintenance in order to make um, they are made to be bitter, and they are made to put things like milk and sugar in, so you don't necessarily have to worry about messing them up or burning them or something like that. Um, kind of moving on, oolong teas are, they have a very specific taste profile. I can't really put my finger on it, but like if you smell it or if you taste it, you'll know. And that's mostly just because they are grown on a very specific region in a very specific mountain, and that's it. You know, they are made in a very specific way, and you can taste the difference and they stick out i don't know why but they do and for very for people who like that kind of stuff um it's very easy to group all those teas into one name as opposed to like trying to pinpoint whatever tea is often named and grouped by where it was grown and oolong teas are that's it rooibos r is a weird word to say it's r-o-o-i-b-o-s um rooibos and it is a as far as i know it's african i'm going oh yeah it's a south african plant it is wikipedia tells me it is a um oh rooibos meaning red bush is a broom like member of the legume family of plants growing in south africa's finbos so basically it is a it's not coming from the camellia sinensis plant but essentially it's called like very um colloquially called rooibos bush tea red bush tea um we're going to just open up a large picture of it right now. It kind of looks like it's very straight. It's very, um, if I had to look at it right now, it looks very much like wood chippy, essentially. But it produces like kind of a weird middle of the road between like that fullness that I was talking to you about um, with black tea and just like the lighter tastes of a green or a white tea. There are red rooibos teas and there are green rooibos teas. And as you can see, it's just basically... Um, the color of it and how it 
how it tastes. The rooibos tea that I have that I like the most is called O Canada, and essentially it is not. Um, it's very maple flavored, so I tend to associate most maple or rooibos teas with just kind of like a very earthy and a very kind of like wood centered kind of feeling. Um, I know I was saying with the black teas, like very kind of colloquially, that it is a um, you know, it's very kind of full and working class and smoky and that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you go to a red teas, rooibos are also called red teas. Um, you're getting more of kind of like a woody or nature like um, taste. Going down the spectrum, we go kind of to green teas. We make a little bit of a jump. Green teas are just like this weird thing where like so much green, so much tea is green. So much tea from around the world is tea, is green. And it's very difficult to classify it as any specific thing because there's just so much there's so much volume of different ways that it's processed and made and that kind of stuff but green tea generally has a good like a flavor profile that is consistent across all teas there's just like different little tweaks in it which is why it's so interesting um i don't really like again i i'm not really so uh, cultured at the moment that I can like give you a valuable taste profile but like if you overdo green tea it's very easy to burn it and it's very easy to make it very bitter but if you steep it correctly it's only it's very light it's very airy it's very just kind of like almost sweet but not so much as if you had dumped a bunch of honey in it let's put it that way it's not so much that you make you use wood in order to make tea I just kind of was using that to explain the flavor someone's asking in chat it's more of that, like, if you think about it in its core value, um, tea is made from plants. You know, it's plants that are steeped in water. So it's not so much that I'm using wood to make tea. It's just, like, a plant that I'm using to put in, like, I'm putting in water and making tea out of kind of tastes woody. It kind of tastes like nat like nature. Let's put it that way. That's the wording I'm using to describe it. It's like if you were just, uh, like, if it's like if you were saying that wine tasted nutty. It's like you're not dumping w nuts into wine, but, like, the way that it's processed makes it kind of feel oh it kind of tastes like a little bit like hazelnut or something that my brain associates with a certain taste that's what i'm trying to like convey um going over to white teas white teas are just like this weird i always just very much um associate them with just being very difficult to steep and it depends on what you're doing it depends on what you're um it depends on what tea you're drinking because some of them are very fragile some of them because white tea is made from very young um leaves when people are picking tea and putting them on or like processing them the buds and the leaves that are like just growing they're just like just maturing let's put it that way are picked and made into white tea so it's very sensitive to water temperature it's very sensitive to like how long you're steeping it you can easily cook white tea by putting too hot water in it and then it ruins the entire cup this isn't to say that you shouldn't approach it at all it's just saying that you need to be careful when you're actually trying to steep it it has a very it's probably the closest thing to like water in the sense that there are just it's very subtle in its taste it's very light in its taste it's very almost airy like if you just think about it it's very kind of like if green tea is a forest and red tea is a woods and black tea is a mountain um white tea is air like white tea is very airy you can get different scents on wind but it's like it's still this intangible thing so it's very light it's very just kind of like i can imagine having it in like you know the, the an afternoon like a morning that's very like sun sunny and just like you need that kind of compliment to your um you need that kind of compliment to your day so that kind of goes through the spectrum that isn't, wasn't a very scientific explanation of it, mostly just because that's like all those different descriptions is what I've kind of like associated with in my brain. So again, what I was talking to, I was saying earlier is that tea is about experience for me. Tea is about making sure that you can have something that complements a certain experience or induces a certain experience. So for me, like when it's raining, when it's raining and it's just kind of gloomy outside, it's like mid afternoon and I want something that's going to kind of carry me or just like warm me until the evening. I will make a lot of black tea because it's just like, it's something dependable. It's something that's strong. It's something that is like overpowering almost. And it dictates the experience that I'm having. It, it forces its way in there and makes sure that it's a part of it. But 
for something that like a day to day, sure, I'll just make a green tea because it is very like it's very middle of the road. It's very kind of like it isn't so much dominating that experience as that it's supplementing it. It's very like in the background and that kind of stuff. White teas or teas that are like very high maintenance. That is the whole experience. It doesn't merge itself in there. It becomes the entire thing because you have to like pay attention to the temperature of what you're drinking or pay attention to how long it's been since you've poured it or pay attention to how long it's been since you've tried to steep it so you don't burn it. So it's all about just kind of like what you are looking for out of an experience. Are you just looking for something to sip at your desk? Buy a green tea. Are you just looking for something that, you know, can kind of help you through a morning or is something that like you need to become more active in your day-to-day -day? buy a black tea are you looking for something that has a little bit of a special taste and it's kind of in the middle you know you can buy a red tea or an oolong or something like that but at the end of the day it's just like just buy what tastes good buy what tastes good and what's easy for you to um easy for you to prepare because it i don't know it's just special like that it's very low maintenance unless you kind of like want it to become high maintenance. No one's going to judge you for drinking a specific type of tea, which is amazing. And for entry level, like you're only looking at maybe like $7 for 50 grams of tea. And then like, if you want to buy something like this or you want to buy like a steeper or something, then it'll cost you more. But those things aren't necessary. You can literally just like go to, you can go to get one of those, like the smallest steeper or smallest like strainer you can find and then use it for other things like um, separating like egg whites and stuff like that. So it depends on how much you want to approach it, how much money you want to spend. But the lovely thing is it doesn't require all that. It's like all you need is the thing. All you need is the tea. And then you can make it tea in a kettle and even tea in a stove or a hot plate or something like that. If you're really desperate, you can put a pot on a hot plate, boil some water, and then make tea, you know? So I hope I answered some questions. I didn't really see a lot in terms of the chat. Uh, do I have a go-to for what I eat with tea? I don't usually eat a lot with tea. Um, usually for me, hot beverages aren't um, part of the kind of ritual for myself. But uh, as you know, for people in like Britain or um, other places, it's very common to have things like biscuits or um, you know crumpets or like tea biscuits and that kind of stuff. Um, I usually just supple like I I have it as like a hot beverage when I need it with the meal. It isn't so much that I pair certain things with it, but a lot of people do. And I think a, a next episode is going to be about pairing different types of tea with food, but I need to do a lot more research before I'm able to like talk on that confidently. So you've mentioned burning tea or getting bitter when you leave it brewing too long. What not about, what about not brewing it long enough? Essentially, when you're not brewing it long enough, you are not getting taste. Not so much you're not getting taste completely. It's just like if I just dipped a tea, like a, a tea bag into a teacup and then like let it left it there for a minute when it's supposed to be there for three. When you drink it, it's going to just taste more like water with little hints of how the tea actually tastes instead of actually getting like a full flavor, a uh, full flavor profile that is just like it, it won't become another drink. You know, it doesn't become its own drink. It just becomes water with a little bit of weirdness in it. You know, you have using those little squ those squirt bottles where it's like a concentrated flavor and you'll squirt it into a water bottle and shake it up. And then it's like, OK, you got like a flavored water, essentially. It's like that. If you only did a little bit of it, it's like your water is not going to taste exactly like water. It's going to taste like water with a little bit of like a little bit of whatever flavor you squirt it into. But it's not going to be an entirely new drink. It's not going to be like what it's supposed to be. So you're kind of just like messing yourself over by not steeping something enough because, or like, to be honest, it, it depends. It's like, it's still a functional drink. And if you're finding something too bitter or too overpowering at its full steeping, you just lower the steeping time. Like it, it's kind of a weird thing where there is no international governing body that is telling you that if you don't steep your green tea for two to three minutes, you, it's not real tea, you know? It's, you're allowed to experiment, and if you've got a lot of tea and you feel like you want to experiment and say, okay, this is too overpowering, I just want to um, I just want to see what it's like if I steep it for less, go for it. And it's the same thing with iced teas. Like we talked about iced teas last week or two weeks ago where um, you need to, because it's brewing longer and because you're brewing a massive pitcher of it, you need to put double the amount of tea into it so that it brews stronger, or you need to make it so that it brews stronger and then you water it down by putting ice onto it, right? How many times can you really reuse tea leaves, if any? How would you go about reusing them? Um, reusing tea is interesting because 
different cultures have ways of um, using teas as a ceremony. So, like, in certain ceremonies, I don't remember which one. I want to say it's Japan, but I could be completely wrong. It could be China or it could be Taiwan. Where if you're reusing teas, uh, each cup is supposed to be different. And tea cups or if you if you take a tea bag out and you, you pour new water on it, it's going to be a lot weaker. It is going to be a lot more bitter because the it's already reacted with um, the water from before, right? So if you're reusing tea bags, um, you are going to get a weaker experience. And in some cases, you may not even get a serviceable cup of tea out of a second or third bag. But in certain cultures, reusing the same leaves for two, three, four, five cups is supposed to represent a narrative of food. Like you talk about um, chefs and how they do like multi-course meals and how each course is supposed to represent something different. That is culturally using like the third, fourth, fifth tea steeping is supposed to be something different in that narrative of, okay, like it's very fresh and amazing you know, at the start, and then, like life, it kind of, like, mellows a little bit as you get older, or, like, you know, the fifth cup of tea is supposed to represent, like, death, or something very bitter, because, like, it's inescapable, or, you know, whatever, so it's just a matter of realizing that the more you use tea, the less powerful it's going to be, because it's already reacted, and the chemicals have already reacted with the hot water, so you can, it's just, like, you have to be a lot more patient, and you have to, like, be more open to steeping it longer, or to, um, put a little bit of newer tea or something in that in order to achieve the same um, same thing. For me, if you want to make a large quantity of tea and just keep it warm, I'd steep it once with a large quantity of it and then keep that warm as opposed to drinking a cup of tea, pouring new water into it because the steeping it just isn't the same. The most important question, Hoarder Alliance, I am not dealing with that. Um, yeah, loose leaf, it's the same thing. It's like it's 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 already reacted with the water. Um, I only really said about the bag mostly just because I can put loose leaf into a bag like this and it becomes bag tea. Is putting a tea bag in my mouth and pouring warm water and swishing around and accepting for tea making? No, it is not. You are going to burn your mouth. Please don't do that. You do not want to scald your tongue because your tongue is the most important thing in this because it allows you to taste. I know you're trolling, but at the same time, it's like... Don't ever put a tea bag in your mouth and then put boiling water in it. That's a terrible idea. Don't do it. This is from Matt Demers. I've not done this myself, but I don't endorse it. I do not. I do not. No, don't do it. Please don't do it. Thank you, Street Ninja, for giving me my laugh for today. To be honest, if you guys just like want like a good, like if you guys are more tongue in cheek, if anything, thank you. If, I'm going to spam in the chat a little bit or I'll just kind of like show it on screen. If you guys are looking for a very good, like, uh, if you're in the America or Canada and you're interested in trying some steep tea or like some loose leaf tea and you just want something really basic, um, I'm going to, I'm going, I'll spam this in the chat a little bit. Um, let's see, opera, transition. Okay. So. This is David's, if you go to davidstea.com, sadly this only, um, this only, what's the word I'm looking for? This only ships to North America and, um, North America and, uh, sorry, it's Canada and the U.S. It doesn't sh ship to Europe, sadly. So if you are looking for something like that, I, like I said, if you guys have any, if you guys know any tea shops that ship internationally or are like this for Europe, please let me know because I want to be able to recommend stuff from that. But um, North African mint is a very easy to get into tea. Um, it's one of my favorites from David's. It's seven ninety eight for fifty grams. I'm not sure if that's in Canadian dollars or American dollars, um, but you can buy as much as you want. Um, I think if you buy over fi like ten dollars or sorry over hundred grams, you get a free tin. And if I hide the browser for a second, the tins look like this. They are just hollow and they store a lot of tea. Um, if you guys want, just like if you guys are looking for something that is just like a very uh, basic like peppermint and ginger, that's pretty much what you got. And it's very easy. It's, you can't really mess it up. Again, going to David's, you got things like peppermint tea. And it, this isn't necessarily a green. It's just like straight peppermint. But um, 
they're very easy things to make and you can't really mess them up which is i think a, what a lot of people are scared of they're scared of messing the tea up who doesn't ship to your small small companies man it's like um small companies especially tea companies like tea companies haven't exploded like starbucks yet and maybe they will in the next little while but um yeah let's see so i put the the north african mint in there and i'm gonna put the peppermint as well if you buy try to buy it in europe i will personally dump it in a harbor america f yeah Anyways, uh, I think this is a good enough place in order to leave off for this week, mostly just because I hit the hour that I wanted to. Um, thank you guys so, so much for putting up with a little bit more of an improvisational episode. My name's Matt Demers. If you like tea on Twitch, consider following the channel because follows always help. I also do a lot of stuff around esports and video games. T on Twitch is kind of just my side hobby. You can check me out at mattdemers.com, which uh, if you are watching this on YouTube or just like watching this on Twitch right now, everything is underneath my Twitch channel and everything will be in the show notes for YouTube. Um, if you want to support the show and the work that I do, you can check out patreon.com slash Matt Demers. This is where you guys can contribute money um, and get awesome benefits. If you contribute at least $5 a piece, I will give you a personalized tea recommendation list, which I think is pretty awesome because I have a ton of fun doing them. I just write out a whole bunch of stuff based on some flavors that you guys give me. But thank you so much for watching. I hope I will see you in two weeks. Thank you for watching Tea on Twitch. And I hope if you guys do get into tea, all your tea is steeped properly and tastes amazing. So see you in two weeks. Hope you have a good one. I'm just going to actually twitch it and send it back to the...